It is 10, no it's not, it's like 11.45 probably. I really gotta be, I gotta pee, and then I gotta shower. What is it about the Negro? I mean, every other group that came as an immigrant somehow not easily, but somehow got around it. Is it just the fact that Negroes are black? White America must see that no other ethnic group has been a slave on American soil. Uh, that is one thing that other immigrant groups haven't had to face. The other thing is that the color became a stigma. American society made the Negroes color a stigma. America freed the slaves in 19... I mean, 1863, through the Emancipation Proclamation of Abraham Lincoln, but gave the slaves no land or nothing in reality, and as a matter of fact, to, to get started on. At the same time, America was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that there was a willingness to give the white peasants from Europe an economic base and yet it refused to give its black peasants from Africa who came here involuntarily in chains and had worked free for 244 years any kind of economic base. And so emancipation for the Negro was really freedom to hunger. It was freedom uh, to the winds and rains of heaven. It was freedom without food to eat or land to cultivate and therefore it was freedom and famine at the same time. And when white Americans tell the Negro to lift himself by his own bootstraps, they don't, oh, they don't look over the legacy of slavery and segregation. I believe we ought to do all we can and seek to lift ourselves by our own bootstraps. But uh, it's a cruel jest to say to a bootless man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. And many Negroes, by the thousands and millions, have been left bootless as a result of all of these years of oppression and as a result of a society that deliberately made his color a stigma and something worthless and degrading. Wow. I took a very long shower. Very, very long. Wash my hair real good. And really long shower. All right, so with my shower, I did all the exfoliating. I did a face mask before the shower, so technically my shower wasn't, I was out of the room for an hour or so. Oh, my hair stuff's downstairs, man. I'll use something that's up here, well, that's I guess. Cool, right? It's not good. I'd have to go back downstairs. You know what? What? Two things. What? One. What? I need food. Food, yeah. The other thing? Yeah. I don't feel like <laughs> Do we we don't have food. You can have a bowl of cereal. I put my hair stuff on, I almost forgot. Okay. <sighs> I have to use because I didn't want to go back downstairs to use the Shea Moisture whatever. This is the My Moisture Curl Oil Gel, which is not my favorite, but I've said before, it works all right for dry, cold, frozen days like today. Oh, I still had mask on my face apparently. You see how my face looks? Looks good, right? Smooth? Yeah, because it is. Use that clay tea tree oil mask or whatever I got from Target when I went to Minnesota with with Barbie yeah it's good it's good stuff it's good it's good I get some more sometime oh excuse me I shave my armpits I use the epilator on my legs so I've got smooth legs too, and I need to lotion because if you don't lotion after using that epilator, it ain't gonna be good. It ain't gonna be good at all. So, uh, let me go lotion. Okay, so this is a good time to do 
a Timu review. This is that, remember this is that three of a kin. Can't buy, I don't think they have, I know they have a well, a well of it, a website. Velvet Waxing Studio. Dot com. But I don't think they ship. I just love this stuff. It just moisturizes. You put it on like that. And you rub it in. Makes my skin so soft and smooth. Like a baby's bottom. <laughs> Doodly boop boop. <laughs> rub it in. I put the tea tree mask on my eyebrows. I think it might have irritated my under eyebrow skin. It's a little bit red right here. Yeah, that's okay. I did that because my eyebrows get greasy. I don't like greasy eyebrows, so I put the mask on. It's all right. It didn't take my eyebrow hair off or anything. Okay, I have a freckle right there. All right. Um, yeah, let's do this Timu review. This, the purple outfit, we're going to put the purple outfit on. We're going to see how good this here Timu outfit is. All right, let me take you over here. So the purple is a nice color on me. These pants are different. I don't think I'm wearing them correctly. Like it has a thing here. I tied up, I ruched them up. I'm wearing them low. So the pants are, they're supposed to be like bell bottomy. I think maybe I got the wrong size. Apple bottom jeans, <laughs> loose with the fur. <laughs> he says loose with the fur. <laughs> I know he's wrong. I'm right, thank you. You're not. Let me show you how right I am. You're so wrong. He knows he's wrong. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't like the pants. The shirt's all right, but if I put on something underneath, different pants on underneath, I think it'll be better. These pants are nice. They're comfortable. I'd wear them as pajama pants, but I don't know. It's odd. So, you know, team outfit. Um, we'll give it a five. Toasty! I thought you were going to eat my arm again. I get nothing! Ah! <laughs> Seriously? Nothing. Ah! We're going to go to the grocery store. It's going to be good times. Hello, my baby. Hello, my gal. Yeah, you're that frog. You want... <laughs> All right. I have to go clear the car off. I'm going to start the car also. I have it be warm inside. Clear the car off. You want to know the temperature? I tell you, but... There's not one. I have a dream my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Every year on this day, white people remind us of that quote. Because number one, that's the only thing they know of Dr. King's speech in 1963. And number two, they've hijacked it and changed Dr. King's message. White people today love to co-opt Dr. King's message and revere his name, but ignore his message. You see, because in Dr. King's time, because of his message, white America hated him. I want to go over some other of Dr. King's words that white people don't know and ignore and show white America who Dr. King was and what his message really was. I want to start with a quote from an article Dr. King wrote in 1957. He said, privileged groups rarely give up their privilege without strong resistance. But when oppressed people rise up against oppression, there is no stopping point short of full freedom. Realism compels us to admit that the struggle will continue until freedom is a reality for all the oppressed people of the world. So white people, when you quote Dr. King, 
Don't forget your privilege. Dr. King was asked by the Christian Century to write an article about some of the things he had been going through as a result of his work. Dr. King was hesitant to write about his own suffering because he did not want to appear to have a martyr complex. But he did write a brief response to their question, and in his response, he wrote this. Due to my involvement in the struggle for freedom of my people, I have known very few quiet days in the last few years. I've been arrested five times and put in Alabama jails. My home has been bombed twice. A day seldom passes that my family and I are not the recipients of death threats. I have been the victim of a near fatal stabbing. So in a real sense, I've been battered by the storms of persecution. I must admit that at times I felt that I could no longer bear such a heavy burden and have been tempted to retreat to a more quiet and serene life. But every time such a temptation appeared, something came to strengthen and sustain my determination. Dr. King faced those trials because he was hated by white America for his message. Speaking of message, white America loves to quote Dr. King when they condemn modern day protests and demonstrations. But when Dr. King was sitting in a jail in Birmingham, Alabama, he wrote the following words. You deplore the demonstrations that are presently taking place in Birmingham. But I am sorry that your statement did not express a similar concern for the conditions that brought the demonstrations into being. I am sure that each of you would want to go beyond the superficial social analyst who looks merely at effects and does not grapple with underlying causes. I would not hesitate to say that it is unfortunate that so-called demonstrations are taking place in Birmingham at this time, but I would say in more emphatic terms that it is even more unfortunate that the white power structure of this city left the black community with no other alternative. Quite simply, Dr. King was saying, stop looking at the demonstrations and start looking at why they are happening. Furthermore, every year in public schools, Children are taught that Dr. King's message was one of equality, and it was. But that is not the end of Dr. King's message. Dr. King's message was one of equality and equity. But after white America assassinated Dr. King, they changed his message to make it more palatable to white America. In an interview in 1967, Dr. King said the following, In the realm of explaining the legislative and judicial advances that we've seen over the last few years, from the Supreme Court's decision of 54 right on through the Civil Rights Bill of 64 and the Voting Rights Bill now, these legislative and judicial developments gave a great deal of hope to the black community. And it's very important to see that they rectified long-standing evils of the South, but they did very little to improve conditions for the millions because Dr. King was calling for equity. All throughout Dr. King's message, he called for equity. You cannot have equality without equity. And lastly, I want to go back to the speech I opened this video with, the speech that white people love to bastardize, in which Dr. King said he has a dream. In that same speech, Dr. King said the following, And as we walk, we must take the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the black community is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. That's a message that was relevant in 1963 when he said it and is relevant now in 2024. So while white America co-ops the message of Dr. King and waters down his words and uses the same quote over and over, I'm going to close this video out with a post his daughter Bernice King made that I think sums it up quite nicely. She posted this photo of her and her mother at her father's funeral with the following words. He wasn't assassinated because he wanted his children to be judged by the content of their character, but for dismantling racism poverty and militarism he wanted corrective measures to eradicate racism not the delusion that it doesn't exist for our first adventure we just accomplished getting out of the driveway yeah that was the challenge it was an adventure Challenge just makes an it adventure. sound difficult. An, an, an adventure implies going somewhere. We did. We went to the out of the driveway. Here <laughs> we are at the Walmart now. The okay. adventure. Well, that technically the Walmart's the first adventure. 
Our adventure was getting out of the driveway. Russ, the leak in my bag. <laughs> Better fix that. You push, push it. Push, 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 push,
Now Russ is trying to get the... He got the... Oh, <laughs> he's mad at the bushes. So he's like, Arr, bushes! He's yelling at him. See how they like fall down like that? So he's breaking them. He's like, okay, you're stupid bushes. Because they are, they're in the way. They're a cause for just like, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not really sure. It's the neighbor's bushes. I wish we could just cut them down, but we can't. Anyway, what I was trying to say is that so we had the trouble getting the Prius out of the driveway twice. Russ is yelling at the bushes. Um, on the way to out to go to the grocery store, get groceries. Yes, hi. That's you. That's you. On the way to out to get groceries on the way in, we got a little stuck and then trying to get the car back out to park on the street because I didn't want to be stuck. So I got to go into work tomorrow. I didn't want to be stuck in the driveway. So we were going to park on the street, um, you know, and so anyways, um, what am I trying to say? The Prius has traction control, which is great if it's rainy weather. It causes you not to be able to, or to have better control if it's slipping and sliding. Not great in the snow. If you're stuck in the snow, one tire will spin, the other tire sits and does absolutely nothing. So, almost like posi traction, it's traction control or whatever. So, it doesn't work for snow. If you're stuck on the ice or snow or anything slippery it's not helpful so Russ YouTubed a video on how to disable it it's a temporary disable once you turn the car back on it's, it's re, re enabled so he did that and we got the car out it took way too long we got the car out it's in the street parked couple houses down that way which is great superb I thought he was gonna have a hell of a time getting the Corolla out he didn't he had to brush it off he had to brush off like a foot and a half of snow but other than that he didn't because the Corolla doesn't have traction control so he was able to get it out a little bit of a struggle but not not too much and he's just now he was yelling and hollering at the bushes. So, uh, ah, that's that. Um, I think he's going to put the Corolla back in the driveway. I don't know. It would be smart to leave it out of the driveway, but we'll see. It's just so cold. And I wish his work would be like, well, you know, just stay at home and work. Right, kitty? Stay at home and work. That's what I would. My car, my car, my work. If they would be like, it's too cold, stay at home and work. I would. And then we don't have to worry about my Corolla. I would just park it in the back, wait till it thaws out, <laughs> you know? But you gotta go in. Me. So tomorrow I work 8 30 to 4. No, I work 8 to 4 30. in the office <sighs> I'm not looking forward to going back outside tomorrow should be nicer when I say nicer it should be above zero maybe tomorrow morning anyway have I told you I hate winter <sighs> I am freezing I'm not freezing I'm very cold Shh. oh Jesus all right kitty hello What's the problem? You've got food and water.
plenty, 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 plenty. I really gotta change our litter out. Ain't good time for that right now. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <coughs> it's cold. Cold downstairs. Colder downstairs than it is upstairs. Um, and that's because of our little space heater we have up here. Typically, this room is frigid air. Frigid. Very, very cold. I am very, very cold right now. Oh, uh, just getting ready for bed. Mm. It's only 9 o'clock, so I'm going to watch an episode of um, Squid Gang. Squid Game. Um, ooh. still waiting for their second season to come out. Hope it's soon because once I finish this, I'm re watching that first season, then hopefully, the second season will be really good too. Um, so I think that the U.S. doesn't play doesn't play doesn't have tv shows like squid game because of how violent they are but then you think about it and it's like why not um the u.s has more guns per capita than any other place i'm pretty sure um don't you can search it if you don't believe me but i'm pretty sure that's true i know we have the most school shootings so there's that Ooh. i gotta move put this bag away that's my bra okay so these pants that i'm wearing currently i will wear tomorrow as well okay so I did a really good job detangling my hair today. It just feels very nice. Um. Um, 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 um. I've got nothing to say here. Okay, so because I have zero things to add to this today. Today was a grocery store adventure. Um, we went to Walmart. Which... Seriously, I feel as though I get in and out of Walmart, get all the groceries that I need, that we need for like a month, two months for the two of us. And I'm in and out of Walmart in like an hour, maybe an hour and a half. It shouldn't take us, but I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure we were in there for like two hours. It's just, too, it's too long. Where are the rest of these? These bags are somewhere. I think they're in here. Oh, they're back there. Hold on. Ah, hair in my eye. Anyway, like I said earlier, I've got nothing else to add. Um, I want to talk about epilator a little bit. Remember the thing I got from Timu for... Um, exfoliating your skin and stuff it does very much work but it didn't remove a lot of my hair this time so I think and that's because I didn't I was running out of hot water so if you're oh sorry kitty I'm used up on your tail so if you're gonna like use the epilator it'd be best in like a bath or you know if you're just like have a sink of water and you do that Dip it in the water, scrub, scrub, scrub. But I mean, it does make your skin very, very exfoliated, very, very soft. Just doesn't get all the hair all the time. Unless you take your time to get the hair. All right. Well, anyways, um, Squid Game, and tomorrow's Tuesday. So have yourself a great night. Stay warm wherever you are. If you're in a place that's already warm, like Texas, stay cool. I don't know. I don't know what the temperature is down in Texas. But I know it's not negative 12 degrees or whatever it is right now. Exactly, cat. 
So, have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Toodles!